Welcome to another episode of To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, give us a like, ring the bell, check us out on social media. Today, my guest, very talented guitar player for Hell Yeah, Mr. Christian Brady. What's going on, man? Bro, I'm just, uh, you know, living the dream, man, trying to make shit happen and... uh just stoked to have you on the podcast. Glad to be here, man. It's good to see you. It's been a minute, right? It has. It has been uh, over a year, man. Uh, Freaking pandemic and all that bullshit. It's kind of so. like every relationship, right? You're like, hey, man, I haven't seen you since before the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it, man. So, uh, yeah, I survived. I made it through it. I started this little uh, podcast thing. It was pretty fun to do when I had nothing to do. Yeah, and yeah. we're going to continue it on and Very bring cool. all my friends on. Yeah, so I'm really stoked to have you here, man. Yeah, I'm excited to be here, man. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, brother. So, yeah, I mean, uh, so we I've known you for going on probably 15 years now yeah. since the House of Blues. I started working on House of Blues in like 2007. You were yeah. doing all kinds of bands over there. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. yeah it's been a minute. Yeah, it has, it's been man. A minute, yeah. It's a trip. And uh, and through it all, man, you went from doing uh, some pretty cool uh, tribute acts and cover acts. And uh, I think the, you did the Rockstar Karaoke. Were you part of that uh, mess, yeah, too? Yeah, I did all that, that thing. And, and then uh, you ended up in freaking hell, yeah. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. I can't even believe it, man. Like, yeah, yeah, it's, there's a whole story around that, which I'm sure we'll get into at some point. Yeah. Uh, involves a, a gentleman by the name of Doc Ellis as well, which you <sighs> know very well. So. Very good friend of mine, Mr. Doc yeah, Ellis. Yeah, wonderful human being. I love that guy. Hell yeah. Uh, hell yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's why it's the greatest <laughs> name ever, man. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, uh, so uh, what you've been doing coming back from the pandemic, you were telling me before uh, we hit record, you got this new Michael Jackson thing you're doing. Yeah, so, you know, I, I don't know, a lot of people probably don't know that, you know, obviously before Hell Yeah, and, and even during Hell Yeah, when I would come off the road, I, I still did a lot of work out here, you know, to pay the bills, right? And uh, I've been a working musician since I was early 20s, man, you know, so... Um, it's always a hustle in that game, right? Feast or famine. Yeah. So uh, I used to play a, another MJ show in town for quite some time, which I, I will not name. And uh, <laughs> th those that know, know. And uh, I'm no longer affiliated with them. But I, uh, I got the opportunity to do this new MJ show, the owner of the venue, which it's at the Mosaic Theater, which is the old Empire Ballroom. It's right by the MGM down the Strip. And uh, he, uh, he talked to me. I was doing another thing there, and we kind of hit it off, and he started talking to me about this MJ show idea he had. He knew I played guitar in this other show. And so I was kind of like, you know, man, I, I did this other one for a long time. I, I don't know if I really want to do another one. I'm kind of, And he was like, no, I, I want you to help me put it together. So that kind of changed the game, and we started talking, and, and I ended up um, I ended up being the music director on it, and also a co-producer. So I've I put all the arrangements together, and and uh, built the band, and built the tracks, and did all all of the music side of the show. So that's that's open now. It's called MJ Evolution, and it's basically a journey through Michael Jackson's uh, career. We start with a Jackson Five segment uh, with a kid, and. Uh, go through like the 70s era and then we go into the uh thriller and and later you know all that stuff uh the main guy in it is michael firestone he's incredible uh the band's great the production's great the dancers are incredible so it's it's a full-on legitimate michael jackson show and uh i think any michael jackson fans would really uh probably love it I mean, what's not to love? I mean, Michael Jackson is always amazing, man. That's I mean, great tunes. Great music. And, and you know, I, I mean, I was a huge fan when I was a kid. So it's like, it's really fun to play all this material still. And, and uh, it was fun to have a hand in putting all that together and, and be able to kind of do it the way I, I always wanted to have the arrangements done, you know, so... Wow, yeah, it looks really nice, too. The MJ Evolution, I have... Uh mjevolution.com pulled up yeah they yeah got that's it this best there it is. some yeah. nice uh, shots of the show yeah of course classic vegas looking show that's fantastic lighting and stage set up oh yeah that's awesome that's cool man i'm gonna definitely have to come check that out i'm a big fan of michael jackson anytime man let me yeah, know it'll be cool man let me know man that's awesome 
So yeah, that's that's been keeping me very busy. Uh, it was a lot of work putting that together. But uh, prior to that, like the COVID was crazy, man. You know, I, I all of a sudden everything just shut down, and uh, for the first time in my life, I had no gigs. Yeah, it's been many many years since I was like, uh, who am I? What do I do now? I don't <laughs> I don't know. But actually, uh, I have a, a studio at my house as well that I, I really took the time over COVID to gear up and get the little things I needed to do full on recording there. So I, I ended up doing a lot of mixing over COVID that, that helped me stay afloat and uh, work, started working on some projects and, and things like that. And, you know, like everybody did some, uh, some you know, collaboration covers and things like that, you know, just to keep keep the hands busy and yeah. honestly man when we when we shut down you know we were doing we had just started doing some touring again with hell yeah uh you know we after we lost Vinny in 2018 we had to we had to finish that record Vinny um had finished his drum tracks on welcome home so we we didn't really have much time after that and we went right back in the studio and had to finish that record up and then the wheels kept turning, man, and we had to uh, we had to kind of do a little touring on it. So we did it as a celebration of life for for Vinny, and we did we did two runs. Uh, Roy Mayorga from Stone Sour uh, played drums with us, and he's incredible, incredible human being, incredible drummer. He and Vinny were good friends, so it just made sense. Yeah, and uh, we had a third one scheduled, and that was supposed to be April May of 2020 and of course everything shut down so we had to cancel that and so that kind of went away and it it kind of forced us to finally take that step back and mourn the loss of our our brother and uh kind of just reassess some things you know and and uh honestly man i i was pretty burnt out at the time i'd still been gigging a lot here and and then the touring and all of that, and, and I hadn't had a real break in a minute. So when that happened, I actually was like, okay, well, I guess originally two weeks to flatten the curve. <laughs> uh, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to take a break. And I didn't actually touch it, which is very strange for me. I didn't touch a guitar for what turned into almost a month or longer. And then I finally was like, all right, well, this is obviously going to, go on for some some time now so we don't really know but I, I picked up a guitar and I, I started practicing again and I kind of I kind of fell in love with the instrument again like I started kind of going back over stuff I used to play when I was a teenager you know like all the Randy Rhodes stuff and Van Halen stuff and 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 uh just anything that I loved when I was a kid and I started like relearning some of that and just kind of practicing to practice rather than having to just learn songs for a gig or that starts taking up your time and you find yourself not just practicing your instrument, you're just learning songs for a gig. You know, you're not necessarily bettering yourself on the instrument. So I, I started doing that and I, and then the studio stuff and that just kind of got me back into it. And then, and then stuff started slowly creeping back and, you know, then the MJ thing and then the, all of that. So I, uh, you know, i all of a sudden I'm really super busy again and, and it's, yeah. I'm grateful, man, but it's, it was a, it was a crazy time, you know, for everybody. I mean, I know, you know, Chad's, Chad's out doing, he's getting ready to go do some dates with Mudvayne. Now they're doing, oh, a cool. yeah, they're doing a reunion. So, uh, a lot of fest, like festival stuff. And, uh, that's, that's awesome. I'm, I'm really happy for him and those guys. And, uh, we'll see what's up with hell. Yeah. After that, you know, we've, we've, uh, we talk all the time and uh we're all still very close and and there's no like bad feelings anywhere amongst the camp so we we'll, you know i think we just needed some time of course and chad will do this thing and that'll keep him busy for a minute and and at that point we'll we'll see where we're at and figure out what we want to do yeah man. so hopefully there'll, there'll be a new hell yeah at some point and maybe some shows or you know we'll, we'll take it one step at a time that's awesome yeah yeah, I mean, you know, losing a guy like Vinny's got to be real rough, man. I uh, I was fortunate enough to have been able to meet Vinny and meet his brother and yeah. hang out with those guys, and they're just a, just some of the nicest people in the world. 
And uh, yeah, they even uh, Vinny even had me over at his house for some parties and stuff. Oh, yeah. it, was, it was pretty fun, man. Yeah, yeah but, there were uh, one or two of those at his house. A couple, yeah. <laughs> He's a wild man. So he yeah, was, it was uh, a big loss for the community, though. He was always out at uh, at the club at Vamped. He was coming out constantly. He, he was everywhere. Man. Just a big I, supporter of the local scene, yeah. and yeah, it was. He was it, awesome. He yeah. was kind of like the unofficial rock and roll mayor of Las Vegas. You know? Absolutely. He, just, he was a regular fixture, and you could find him. Anywhere there was live music, he'd turn up, man. He loved going out. He loved seeing shows. He loved being busy and, and out on the scene, man. He just he hated being home and sitting around. He he hated being bored. So, like, we <laughs> we would go out a lot. And, and yeah, I, I, you know, I miss that guy a lot. He was, he was one of my... One of my one of my best friends, man, and uh, it was it was a hard thing. It's uh, I still I still miss him every day, and uh, but he was uh, he was an, just an amazing amazing guy. He was one of the sweetest dudes, and it seems like those are the ones that always get taken from us too soon, you know. Yeah, you know they they leave their impact though. That's for sure. I guess I just the solace I take is that hopefully he's reunited with his brother somewhere and his mom and uh you know that yeah but uh, we we miss him every day and and I'm grateful for the the time I got to spend with him and and the music I got to make with him and the touring and the just all the experiences it was incredible and uh yeah I mean if you had told me when I was 16 that I would play in a band with Vinnie Paul, I would have punched you in the face. So, you know, uh, he was a legend. The fact Total that I got to legend. do that is is incredible, and I'm grateful for it, man. Yeah, it was a blessing, man, for sure. And like the impact that the Abbott brothers had on the metal community, I mean, still immeasurable. You go to a metal show, and they they say raise it up for Dime, and you know, Always. now for the you know for the Abbott brothers, and they changed the game, man. Yeah, those guys changed the Pan- crowd goes nuts. Those guys and Pantera changed the game. I remember the first time I heard them, I was 16, and my buddy rolled up uh, at lunch in his car, and he opened the doors to his, his Mustang, a Mustang, like 80s style Mustang. And he's like, you guys got to hear this. And he threw the doors open and put on this love. And I was like, what the, can I cuss on You this? can totally fucking cuss like, on here. I was like, what the fuck is this, dude? Like, <laughs> whole, <laughs> and uh, I went out after school that day and went and bought Cowboys and, and Vulgar. And that was it. I was like, this is the greatest fucking thing since Van Halen like oh yeah you know what I mean like just and I had the same thing like the brothers and they were incredible and the the just but they they you know for for heavy music for metal they changed the game man they just they were doing something different and uh so yeah that was that was life-changing man and and uh I saw them many times as a teenager and, and early 20s and and uh you know yeah, That's I like. Crazy. I love the analogy of uh, the Van Halen. I, I always consider them like the Van Halen of metal, you oh, yeah. know, because I mean Absolutely. they have the incredible front man and the super solid bass player and the brothers yeah, the on brother, guitar right? and drums writing it and all. And they out. actually started the same way that Eddie and Alex did on opposite instruments. Oh right. Yeah. So yeah. it was very very similar stories, man. And and I guarantee you that both sets of brothers played the way they did because of each other. Yeah. You know, Eddie used to say that all the time about Alex. He's like, I play the way that I do because of my brother that rhythmic sense that they had together and same with with dime and vinnie man they just had that that connection you know and they were uh, special yeah some of the best music ever made man i know that was uh for me and there wasn't anything better than that i ended up getting a pantera tattoo on my back when i was a teenager right. and just fucking loved pantera so much man i got to see them all individual i never got to see actual pantera play such oh, a disappointment dude, they were so but good, man. i got to see down and i got to see uh damage plan and hell cool. yeah and um and uh kill devil hill i got to yeah. work with uh Got to work with uh, Rex. Rex. Yeah, yeah, on that. And that was cool, man. Yeah, yeah, they were all fantastic, fantastic people. Yep. So, yeah, I love those guys. I, uh, I I saw Pantera for the first time. I was 17. 17. I saw them at the Huntridge. Oh, wow. On Vulgar. Insane, dude. That place was out of control. I Literally. Bet. You remember? You remember they had the... 
Uh, for for those of you that don't know, that that's an old movie theater here that had concerts for a long time until the roof caved in. <laughs> and uh, they're supposedly, I think somebody bought that and they're renovating it. Every like three years they're renovating the Hunters yeah, and then it kind of a, falls apart again. Well, hopefully it happens because that place was great, but uh, so many memories there, man. But uh, well, There's a hole that needs to be filled out here. We yeah. lost a lot of venues to the pandemic, so it would definitely do well. And... Uh, they had the... Did you ever go there? Were you ever at the Huntridge? I, I think it was before my time. So it was the fact that it was an old movie theater, they had the, the pit area where you would go down by the front of the stage. It was always that area in front of the screens, right? But they still had the chairs in, bolted in the floor like a movie theater, right? Movie theater-style chairs. Yeah. After the Pantera show, there were about maybe three or four clusters of chairs that were ripped out of the concrete, <laughs> just dangling. <laughs> like, that was a pretty common... <laughs> scene in a Pantera show, but it was just, I remember I was, I was 17 and you know, I'm not like a, a huge guy or anything, but I was like, I was gung ho and I'm like, oh, I love getting in the pits and I love, I'm like, I'm getting in the pit. And I started walking down towards the pit and I saw this giant dude throwing elbows in the pit and like <laughs> mowing people over. And I was like, maybe I'm not going to get in the pit. And I turned around <laughs> and I walked back and I watched the show and it was just, it was, it was insane, man. It was great. That's awesome. It's killer. I love crazy mosh pits, man. I try to stay out of them, but uh, sometimes, you know, you can't help yourself. you got to dive in and sometimes, man. relive the good old days. And then it really depends a, a on what kind back. of people are in it. If you got the yeah. cool people that the way it's supposed to be, if they're like, you go down, you pick them up, like it's yeah. you look out for each other, it's cool. When you got the, the dickheads in there throwing elbows and just hitting people and being an asshole, then hey, it's not fun. You know no. what I mean? But swinging their fists in the air at nobody, uh, just trying to sucker punch people. Yeah, it's just like, like, what are you just doing, man? Cool, man? Like it's just about taking care of each other and having a good time. And oh yeah, you know, Chad was always great about uh, really pushing that at our shows. Like he always talked about the metal community and the the family and looking out for one another. And I and I feel that. Because of that, at our shows, it was always a good vibe in the crowd. There was very few fights and very few incidents because that's what we preached. You yeah, know what I mean, like that's that's what we're, we were about as a band with with Hell Yeah. We we're all about looking out for each other and the, and the, I mean, the metal community really is a a family thing, man. Like it's you know most most guys that get into metal early and people that get into metal early are kind of outcasts and kind of the people that everybody looks at kind of strangely and. You know, oh, what this guy's weird. Like, you don't belong, blah, blah, blah. Well, I do belong. I belong to this. Yeah. You know what I mean? And those people take care of each other, man. And, and that's that's a great thing, you know? And and, and he, that's what we always try to push in our shows. So Yeah, the Hell Yeah shows are always really uh, great vibes, man. I've seen you guys a few Thank times, you. and it's just fantastic show. Fantastic Thanks, man. show, man. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, and it's true. The uh, the freaking metal community. I remember growing up and being that outcast kid, and we had uh, sure we had the um, American Legion Hall where we do metal concerts every Friday night, oh, okay. and it was just like religious for us. We were just that's where we were going to be, and we knew everybody there, and we knew all the bands, and everyone's talking shit out back, smoking cigarettes, yeah. and yeah, and it was just this 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 great family environment like uh well not family friendly like disney but like it is it's family like it's your tribe man the those metal are your family. people yeah. yeah that was yeah. our gang that was it you know and, yeah and nobody fucked with anybody you know what i mean and, and outsiders didn't fuck with anybody because they they, <laughs> they wouldn't last so we had uh, a couple of places here in town we had the huntridge which was they had a lot of great shows there and we had the boston bar and grill which was a great hang back in the day for music and yeah, there were, there were a lot of cool places that, that had great bands back in the day, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah especially in Vegas. I mean, uh, so many good venues out here. And the yeah. local scene's kind of a weird thing out here because there's so many people that do the cover band thing professionally and then the tribute band thing kind of merges over. And then yeah. then you have like a, a local original community of people trying to do original music. And... Uh, I don't know. It's a, it's a definitely a weird uh, space to try to promote yourself as an original artist. I know people are really adamant about like getting into shows for free if they're locals and all this kind of stuff when we're putting on concerts. I and mean, if you're if you're an original band trying to to you know make it and promote yourself and get out there and make a name, I, I, I nobody should ever want to get into that show free. Yeah, because those bands how they get paid. 
You know what I mean? Most most places, are, that's how you make your money. So support your support them, man. Go Absolutely. Pay the, go pay the money. Go see the band and help them out. You know, like I, I for years I was always in both scenes. It was kind of weird. I was kind of like the, like I worked because that's how I made a living. I was a working musician, and for me it was like some guys were weird. They would be weird about that. Like, oh man, you know, I don't, I don't do covers, man, and stuff. I'm like, you know what? My job is still cooler than any day job that I've ever had, and I had plenty of them. So if I get to do this for a living, yeah, I'll fucking do that any day, man. I, and it makes me it made me better at, at playing guitar. It made me better at everything, you know. But like, I I, uh, I always did both. I always had like work, and then I always had an original project that I was in and pursuing, and you know, trying to accomplish that fight that good fight all the time like the other was just a means to be able to do this to try to get to there you know and then uh, of course for years of that and then all of a sudden i'm 37 years old and i get yeah. into hell yeah and i'm like made it dude incredible man like just it's uh I, you know i met Vinny through doc ellis we were doing an acoustic thing at the dive bar Really, it was just an excuse for us. To, it was a Tuesday night. We knew everybody at the dive bar because we always hung out there. That's the right? spot. And drank there, the old dive bar. Yeah. So we always hung there and drank there. And finally, they were like, you guys are always here. Do you want to just play a night? And so we were like, they were like, we got Tuesdays open. We're like, well, can we drink for free? And they're like, <laughs> sure. So we just come down and hung out for a few hours and played acoustically and drank for free, right? Because yeah. we would have been there anyway. <laughs> so um, we called it the Booze Brothers. Oh, nice. And uh, we would just basically dick off for a few hours and, and play a bunch of tunes and have a good time and get hammered. And uh, Vinny came down one night to see it with him and, and our buddy Bry Dog. And... Uh, uh, yeah, he walked in, and I was like, I looked at Doc, I go, that's Vinnie Paul, right? He goes, <laughs> he goes oh, yeah, yeah, I, I told him to come down. I'm like, cool. <laughs> so uh, we get done with the set, and we go over and sit at the table, and he and he introduced me. And at the time, I was playing with Frankie Perez. Well, I'm, s I'm still playing with Frankie Perez, but uh, I was playing with Frankie Perez. We had a residency at the Palms every Sunday night. And uh, so he asked me what else I did. And so I told him, I, you know, at the Palms every Sunday with Frankie Perez. And Doc was like, yeah, you got to go see those guys. He goes, all right, man, I'll come out and check it out. And I'm like, yeah, whatever. I'm like, because I didn't know Vinny at the time. I'm like, he ain't coming out. Shit, Vinny Paul's not going to come to my gig. Right. Sure shit, that Sunday night, about eight people rolled in, sat down and watched the whole show. Swear to God, every week, if he was in town, he was there. And we started becoming friends. And... Next thing I know, we're hanging out and uh, getting to know each other, and we just started hanging out all the time. And, uh, in fact, I got a great story about the first time we actually hung out outside of the Palms. I love it. We had gotten done with the gig, and it was the first time he ever asked me to come out with them. We got done, we were packing up, and, and I went to the bar to have a drink with them after the show, and he's like, what are you doing right now? I go, well, i got to pack my stuff. And he's like... Come meet us at Mandalay, man. We're going to go see The Limit, which is a, some friends of ours played covers at, at Mandalay. And I was like, all right, man, I'll come, I'll come meet you guys. And uh, so I pack my stuff up. It takes me a minute. I had a ton of gear at the time and load up the car and I head over to Mandalay and I pull in the valet area. And as I'm pulling around, I see those guys starting to pile out. Uh, and I'm like, oh, no, I missed it. Oh, no. And I, so I roll down the window and I yell. I'm like, Vinny. And Vinny sees me, and he's he's about, you know, not three sheets, but two sheets to the wind. <laughs> he's usually a few. And uh, and he sees me, and he and he hollered out. He hollered out. He goes, Chris Brady, I'm riding with Chris Brady. And he <laughs> walks away from everybody, <laughs> opens my door, climbs in my car, and shuts the door. And I'm like, uh... Vinny Paul's in my car. All right, where are we going, bro? And he's like. Rick's Cabaret. <laughs> <laughs> so to the titty bar we went, and uh, we, we hung out till about four in the morning, and ended up back at his place. And he made breakfast for for us all, and we ate bread. And I probably passed out in one of the spare rooms he had in the back, and, and that was the first night. And pretty much from there, every night I got the text, "We're going here, man. What are you doing?" And oh man, that was it. It was like in the club. 
That's that fantastic. Was it. And then fast forward to when they were doing Blood for Blood here, and they just parted ways with Greg and, and Bob Zilla. And uh, uh, I had met Tom several times, and we, we were always cool with each other, but uh, they were recording the album here with Cherko. And um, we started getting to know each other, and Vinny started bringing him out to see Frankie. Like, and next thing I know, they're both coming out, like, every show we were playing. And, and uh, I guess that was kind of my unofficial audition. So <laughs> I got the call from Tom, actually, is the one that called me and asked me if I'd be interested. And uh, I was like, yeah, yeah, yes, I would. Hell, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, I would. <laughs> so that was, that was back in 2014. That's so cool, man. Crazy. Yeah, and Tom's a good guy, too. I've gotten to hang out with him a couple times as well, man. Oh, I fucking man, this love fucking Tom, The whole man. band is great, yeah. Just good dudes. Tom's, Tom and I, you know, Tom and I, we, we found this out. The first run we did, we were out with Avenged Sevenfold. The first run I did with him, I should say. And uh, he had a couple friends out to one of the shows. We were talking before the show, and they were like, hey, you got a birthday coming up, right? And and Tom's like, yeah, I, I, yeah, coming up in in June. And I was like, when? I mean, it was June 25th. Like, Shut the fuck up. <laughs> That's my birthday. So Tom and I have the same birthday. Uh, so literally almost every year when we were on the road, we'd be on the road at June, summertime, right? You're touring. So we would celebrate yeah. our birthdays together almost every year. And I'm Vinny sure would always was have some. Oh, it's great. And Vinny would always have something set up surprising us with double cakes or something and or taking us out to dinner or let's go you know whatever it was man we'd always did something really cool so that's yeah. awesome tom's my tom's my boy i love that guy yeah he was always a nice dude to me whenever i was working with him man yeah freaking uh oh, hell yeah i love that great stories man uh, great stories tons of them man tons uh, all great so now and uh now you're playing with the moby dicks as well yeah, so uh, I uh, connected with Brian Tishy, uh, who's a fantastic drummer. Um, he's played with a lot of people. If you look him up, you'll you'll see his resume. Um, oh yeah, Tishy's amazing. Yeah, he's he's he, he was actually Vinnie Paul's favorite drummer. That doesn't surprise yeah, me. I mean, I mean, he used to love one of the Tishy. best drummers in the world. In he fact, did that, we did that Rush tribute with him. He, yeah, the Primus yeah, yeah. band played with his Rush tribute. Yeah, and they're it was great. Friggin' incredible. Yeah, they're great. Um, one of the the first time I went to Dallas uh, for the initial rehearsals with Hell Yeah before that Avenged Sevenfold tour, uh, it was like the first night I got into town, and we went into the room and set up and everything, and we were going in the next night to uh, rehearse. And Jeff Tate was playing at the House of Blues in Dallas, and Tishy was drumming with him. So that was the first time I, I saw Tishy play. Uh, Vinny was like, come on, we got we got to go. We're going out to see Jeff Tate. I'm like, all right, cool. And uh, so anyway, uh, fast forward, I got uh, introduced to Tishy through uh, Mike Orlando, a guitar player who was playing with uh, like Adrenaline Mob. And he was on that tour with us as well with Avenge Sevenfold. And he introduced me to Tishy, uh, and I did the Randy Rhodes show, the Ra Randy Rhodes Remembered in L.A. at NAMM, and then they did one in Vegas, and I did it here, and I kind of started getting to know Tishy, and then he asked me if I wanted would be interested in doing the Moby Dicks. And initially I was supposed to do several shows at Vamped. Uh, this is probably 20... 17 or something like that and uh doug aldridge was originally going to do them and then he had a tour come up so they asked me to do it but then doug ended up that fault fell through so doug ended up doing it and uh so i ended up starting to play with them in like 2019 and uh I'd, we just did a weekend at vamped we were supposed to play the weekend Corey shut down vamped Oh, really? Yeah, like God. literally we got canceled the night before the two shows, and that was when everything got shut down. That's So rough. we were supposed to play that. So this was kind of like finally the makeup weekend for that, which was well over a year later, you know, and, and uh, 
it was fantastic. That's Moby Dix's uh, uh, Led Zeppelin tribute. Probably the best Led Zeppelin tribute. I mean, Chaz uh, West on vocals. He's great. And Tishy on drums. Phil Susan on bass. And, Phil Susan and, on yeah. bass, yeah. And, uh, and Phil, Phil's played with a bunch of people, too. Phil's awesome, man. He's such a good dude and, and just everybody, man. They're all so talented. So I, I, uh, I'm, yeah, I, I, I'm very fortunate to get to play in that. And uh, right. it's it's awesome. And we just have a great time. I mean, how can you not have a great time playing Led Zeppelin, right? So, know, right. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. Phil played for Ozzy, Billy Idol, Vince Neil, Johnny yep. Holiday, John Waite, Beggars and Thieves. So uh, Ozzy and Billy Idol, that's probably where Brian Tishy met him because I know Tishy played for Ozzy and Billy Idol too, right? Yep. Yeah, I, I believe they did it at the same time. That would make sense. Yeah. So cool. And he, oh, he played with Jimmy Page for real. Yeah. Phil Susan. Yep. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, he did. He did. How he cool is Jimmy. that, man? He's yeah, a badass. Cool. This, yeah, so it's a super group. It's a friggin' it's, super group. It's pretty crazy, man. It's it's uh just a lot of fun and, and you know, we don't we don't dress up like the band or anything like that. We don't we don't that's it's not that kind of tribute. We just try to pay tribute to Zeppelin and we play the songs, but we kinda try to embody what Zeppelin used to do at their shows. They just kinda they just kinda took it places right and there would be improv moments and there would be jams and there would be everything was different every night with those guys because they were just incredible so like that's kind of what we try to embody when we do do a show like we'll we'll have jam sections and songs and we'll just just go places man and just have a you know just we just want to have fun and pay tribute to a band we all love man and that's that's what we try to do and and there's a lot of great Zeppelin tributes out there, and we just, you know, we just, there's enough of them that dress up and do that whole thing. None of us want to do that. We just want to, yeah. we just want to be us and, and just pay homage to the greats, right? So, yeah, and you don't, you don't need to dress up, man. You yeah. guys are all uh, by your own rights, man, you know, like, yeah, you know, it's, deserving yeah, to be up there in front of everybody killing it. And it's just like, it's just a uh, privilege to get to see all you guys play together, man. I mean, Fucking what an amazing group of talent that's on the stage when you get to see the Moby Dick. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. It's a, it's a pleasure to get to play in, in that group of guys. And, and uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. That's awesome. So you guys got, uh, so are the Dicks going to be playing anytime soon or? Uh, we're, we're looking at more dates, uh, hopefully at Vamped. And, and uh, we end up, you know, it's kind of our home. Uh, you know, we love Corey and Corey, Corey loves the band. So we, we, uh, we we tend to just play there when in town, so we're kind of looking at maybe doing. We just played, so we kind of try to do every three months or something like that. So maybe oh, yeah. sometime so in you October. You guys just did what the twenty third and twenty fourth of July. You just yeah, played there. We just played, yeah. Nice. It was uh, it was great. But Vamped is you know the home of rock and roll in Vegas, man. Those guys are incredible. It's probably one of my favorite rock clubs in the country, and and I've been to a few of them. Yeah, and uh, Danny and and Corey are the best, and everybody there. They just they take such great care of of us and the bands and everybody that comes through there. They're just awesome. So uh, anybody not in town seeing this, if you come to Vegas, go to Vamped. Uh, it's it's the rock and roll bar here in town, and it's it's awesome. Yeah, it's. Uh, I'm glad they survived the the pandemic and all the bullshit. Cause so many venues shut down, and it's such a fantastic venue for everybody to play at. Yeah. The it locals really and the touring acts. It's just the right size yeah. for like a lot of these acts that came out of the '80s that are still touring around and doing the three to five hundred seaters, man. And and the sound system is incredible. Oh yeah, it's giant like, wall of speakers. I know it's so much more than any club needs, but it's so uh, awesome. It's like it's so great. Yeah, Sorry. I used to have to unplug the top speakers when I was working there. I was like, these aren't doing anything but causing noise bouncing around the room, <laughs> yeah, man. Right. We don't need them. Yeah. Uh, and the friggin' park hands. All, oh, yeah. All old school lighting. Oh, it gets warm up there. Yeah, it does. It gets warm. But when, it's kind of cool, too. It's kind of like that old school vibe, and it it bring, it just kind of brings back that whole thing of, you know, yeah. like, you know, first start playing, and, you know, the LED stuff wasn't out, and... Uh, get up there and play a rock show and sweat and just uh, by the time you get done you're exhausted but it's like yeah i played a rock and roll show you know and it's oh it's, it's very it's that, rock and man roll. it's great it's, it looks just like a 80s rock video man I mean, you just don't see it anymore everything's led lighting and so to see a whole rig and nothing but park hands, i know it's, it's, it's a very rare experience it's these great. days 
It's very cool. Yeah. Well, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. So, well, I know you uh, wanted to get out of here in time. You have a uh, Michael Jackson uh, I rehearsal. Don't, I, don't, I don't have a, I had that earlier today. I don't yeah. have a show tonight, but uh, yeah. I have a couple things uh, going on this evening. Uh, I actually just... <laughs> uh, I'll... I'm sure I'll post something of that very soon, but I just yeah. uh, I just bought a new motorcycle today. Oh, really? I did. Uh, I've been looking for a minute. I have my other bike, which is uh, I have an 05 Honda Saber that's been bobbered out, and it doesn't. You wouldn't even know it's a Honda unless you knew. Like it just Danny uh, Coker did a bunch of work on it for me, and they're, they're you know obviously they're incredible. They have the counting cars show and and. Uh, he's such a dear friend and, and just, they did amazing work on, on that bike. And I've been looking for a, a bike that I can use for longer rides because the other one's bobbered out. It's not meant for yeah long haul stuff. It's, you know, in town riding and stuff, but I wanted something I could ride, you know, out of town and take long trips on and put someone on the back. And, uh, so I found a, uh, 2014 Harley Street Glide, and it's killer. It was in Mesa, Arizona, and the guy uh, actually brought it out here, and just dropped it off today. And uh, it's he did a lot of killer custom work on it. It's all denim black, and he he's probably about three quarters of the way done with black and everything else out on it. So it's just beautiful, and uh, it's it's yeah, it's something like this right here. Something like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Only only uh, denim black, so not glossy. Oh, okay. And okay. all the the pipes are blacked out. The, the most of the engines blacked out. The so it's all like, yeah, it's solid. Super, black. It's super cool, man. That's awesome. And so I literally just got it delivered today. It's in the garage, and and I'm excited to get on that that thing and ride it. That'll and, be fun, uh, man. Yeah, yeah. That's 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 having that that. Up my other bike during the pandemic kind of kept me sane. Yeah, get out and uh, just dude. cruise. I mean, you know, every, nobody wanted to go anywhere. You couldn't do anything, so you just sit at home, right? So I was like, uh, uh, <laughs> I get on that thing and just go ride all day or go wherever. Just I was like, that kept kept me sane for sure. Oh yeah, man. I know Angela and I were like driving out to the mountains and out in the the yep. woods and stuff like that, and just trying to get away from it all for a little while. Totally. We were stuck inside, you know. Yeah. It'd drive you crazy. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> it, it almost did. <laughs> yeah, they tried, man. I mean, let's face it, we're all a little crazy anyway. But yeah, to survive in the music industry, I think you have to be. <laughs> it's man. true. So. You know, we all we got we all got a few screws. Uh, misplaced <laughs> i don't want to say loose just in different <laughs> in different screw holes that's all <laughs> oh, exactly man yeah i i spent a lot of time in the pandemic working on uh tightening my screws up man trying to figure out some things and learning yeah. meditation and doing lots of yoga and like it was great it was actually really uh beneficial to have that time to kind of reflect and go inward as opposed to just constantly be doing jobs yep. I think uh, I think a lot everybody was kind of forced to do that, right? Because yeah. I mean, you're spending a lot of time with yourself and your significant other at that point. You're, I know, right? And it, it you know, the, uh, I hate that you know the pandemic brought a lot of relationships stronger and, and, and it ended a few relationships, but you know, it, it uh, yeah, it let everybody know. I mean, you're not like going to work and coming home and like having dinner and going to bed. It was like you. This is your person. This is it. Are you sure this yeah, is your yeah. person? You're you gonna know? find out real quick, oh, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we were uh, thankfully Angela and I made it through the pandemic. Uh, our relationship was a lot stronger because of it. I think, man. That's great, and man. it was it was a trial though. I mean, we you know we both went through hard times, and but oh, we yeah. were there to support each other. But I know a lot of people just were like at each other's throats the whole time uh, and end up getting divorced and moving out and separating and well the thing is is that that kind of situation not only are you all of a sudden around someone all the time but you're also in a very stressful situation so it really kind of brings out in each other how you handle that kind of a thing and how you take care of one another right so um you know you you hope that that everything's good and you you're able to fight through it and just take care of each other and uh you know it, it 
you figure it out real quick. Oh yeah. But uh, you know, yeah. it, uh, it, it, uh, I think you know. I think everybody's hopefully coming out the other side a little stronger and a little clearer headed, maybe a little more clear headed. Uh, I, I definitely took stock in a lot of things that are important in life and 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 things I want to do and not. I don't want to do coming back out of the the pandemic. So, you know, I, I think everybody got a good amount of self-reflection time. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, I definitely figured out what I wanted to do with my life and, and making strong efforts in that direction, yeah. you know? Really good. recalibrated my aim. and Good, man. This is cool. You I'm know. glad you're doing this. And, and it's, Thank you. It's been fun to be here with you and... Uh, you know, it's been a privilege to have you on, man. Stuff, yeah. You'll Thanks, have to come man. back on again, man, and get some more stuff going on. Yeah, and just sure, come back man. on and talk shit, man, you know? We just, yeah. It's fun to just hang out and sit around and chat. What I really like about this is, like, I, I've known people like you, amazing musicians and, and just great dudes my, for years. And we'll see each other in the club or we'll work with each other yeah, on stage. Yeah, passing. And like, yeah, yeah, it's just like this this brief interaction that kind of reaffirms, okay, we still are, you know, if we're in good shape, you know, we're friends or whatever, but like, I got shit to do, you got shit to do. It's right. 110 degrees in here or 110 decibels in here, so we can't really talk. Right, right. And so having this opportunity to like talk to people and really like, you know, have a conversation with people. I, a lot of times I've never had the opportunity to have a real conversation with. Yeah. And it's just been a, a huge privilege for me personally to get these opportunities, man. And it really changed my concept of like the relationships that I have with everybody. Cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. This, uh, I mean, yeah. This is probably one of the first times we've actually gotten to really sit down and talk like this you know we've known each yeah. other forever but it's always been in working situations so this is great man it's yeah it's fantastic yeah, right yeah, it's good to finally do this and and get to know each other more a little more intimately and and you know yeah i'll definitely come right. back i'd love to come back man dude thank you man yeah, yeah it's it's fantastic having you on man so um yeah why don't i wrap it up man and i'll give you some shout out for your stuff so you got the michael jackson uh, evolution experience going on right now with the strip that runs five nights it's thursday through monday um so yeah you can just look it up on the on the site and nice and where is that at again it's at the mosaic theater the and mosaic that's all theater. on the site so if you go to the site you'll see it you can get tickets through there and and uh yeah it's a, it's it's a cool show man it's a lot of fun and it was a lot of fun to put together and 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 continue to be involved with nice and that's mjevolution.com as well you're doing the frankie perez show yeah still and playing with frankie we actually have a show coming up august 28th at red rock okay uh, it's kind of a combination of uh, covers and originals and he did a, a new record over the the pandemic that he just basically did for himself and it turned into this this really killer record and he had no deadline no anything he just did it and when it was done he just like okay i'm happy with this and it's it's fucking awesome and you know frankie's so talented man oh and he's like one of the most talented performers I in know. vegas man he's, he's insane, incredible dude. he's and he's a, another one of those guys that's just a great guy and one of my dearest friends and and uh, i love him to death and and i love being able to make music with him and and perform with him and and uh so we're going to be doing more shows uh, for sure. And, uh, yeah, all, all of that, man. Nice. You know, lot, nice. Lots of stuff coming up. So, And hopefully some more hell yeah if we get it. I hope so, man. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm definitely always creating and, and writing. And so we'll, we'll, you know, Tom and I talk regularly. And, and Chad, too. Chad lives here in town now. So, oh, you know, awesome. he's, uh, we talk all the time. And, and you know, I'm sure we'll hopefully do some writing at some point and see what happens so looking forward to that that would be too. fantastic to see that continue it was a it's a cool project that came out of nowhere and and really like had an impact in the metal community man so it's it's yeah, good to see it continuing it was, on yeah I, I i think it will man i i i'd like to like to think it will and you know we'll we'll get there yeah we we'll get there you know we 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 genuinely still all really care about each other and and love making music together so you know it's just timing i think roy's out playing with ministry oh, again he played with them uh a while back and he's i think he's out doing that right now so you know when 
Chad gets done with that and Roy gets done with that, I'm sure hopefully we'll hopefully we'll do something, man. I'd, yeah. I'd, I'd like to see that happen. So That'd be amazing. Well, you know what? Uh, thank you so much. I'd like to thank my guest, Mr. Christian Brady. You're amazing. Uh, make sure you uh, hit the subscribe button, give us a like, ring the bell, check out our social media. This has been uh, To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. Peace. Thanks for watching To the Fullest with Jason Froberg. You can check out more podcasts here and subscribe by clicking right here. We air new podcasts every Monday morning on Space Brain Station and all of your favorite podcast apps.